I've come to the famous River Clyde in Scotland, and on a cold winter's day, it's perhaps not the best time for a boat trip. But I couldn't be in safer hands because I've come to meet a true local hero, a man who saved hundreds of people from these waters. Also in the programme, Claire's in Ballymena in Northern Ireland at a gym for the body and the soul. Through this gym, since we opened six years ago, there has been about 30 people have given their lives to Jesus just through the tool of fitness. And we'll be launching this year's Songs of Praise Gospel Choir of the Year competition. And we've got wonderful hymns and songs from across the UK but we begin just along for in Paisley with a classic hymn of praise. Glasgow's changed a great deal since it was the shipbuilding capital of the British Empire. Many traditional industries have declined, but now the old and the new sit side by side with ships, whiskey, even television programmes being produced by the waterside. The Clyde remains one of Britain's busiest waterways, and that, combined with the unpredictable weather, means it can be pretty treacherous. Each year, hundreds of people get into difficulty on the river. And for more than two centuries, the Glasgow Humane Society has done all it can to be there to rescue them. George Parsonage succeeded his father as chief officer of the society. I met him when the waters were calm, but after a lifetime rowing this river, George knows how quickly people can get into trouble. I was not really expected to follow in my father's footsteps, but the day my father died, that afternoon there was an accident down river and TID phoned people that hadn't known my father was dead and told us of the incident and I just 
you just went. That was a... What kind of situations do you get called to on the river? Well, you can get people try to walk across a bridge. They try, they think they're clever, usually with a bit of drink in them, and you can get a boating accident. Now, the boating accidents are never really any problem, but you never know when it could become a problem. And sometimes, sadly, it is people wanting to take their own lives. Uh, I don't believe in the word suicide at all. Usually find their cries for help. Unfortunately, some of them obviously don't make it, but our proud boast is, my father's boast and now mine is that uh, we've never seen anybody drown in the river. If we see somebody, if somebody's alive when we're called out, we're always able to rescue them, you know? I also believe that there's somebody guiding us all the time because the number of very, very strange experiences I've had, being in the right place at the right time, there has to be a God. There has to be something up there. One of the many George has rescued from the river is Gordon Simpson. I was going out rowing one day in a sculling boat. Up the river I came and I got just under this bridge we're standing on now and I got to the other side of the bridge and my oar jumped out the gate. Now when your oar jumps out the gate in a sculling boat, you fall in because you have, you have no balance. And it was a very cold January day with a howling westerly. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't have been out, but I was. So I got in the water, I said, oh. And I badly panicked slightly, but I kept my cool. Fortunately, there was people crossing the bridge at the time. They ran up and called a George. George came down, got into his boat, come out, went alongside me, put his arms under my oxers here, and then, then he pushed me under which gave me a bigger fright. But, but it was to get buoyancy, and when I pushed it up, he pulled me right back up and pulled me into his boat, which I was glad to get in, into. I've heard it said that you've rescued 1,500 people or thereabouts. Is that right? I certainly know my dad had rescued more than that. But... Uh, you, you, don't go, you don't go counting. But you must have... Seen death, though, on the river. Said so, all, yeah. Whether it's a child or an older person, once you see a dead body, you don't want to see another one. Don't want to see another one. And that makes you really, really eccentric about the safety point. And I'm very proud that we are concentrating on the safety bit just now. You've spent your life dealing with life and death situations. I wonder how that's forged your beliefs. Well, I was born and brought up in the Church of Scotland. The river is heaving. We can have four or five hundred racing boats out in the river on a Sunday morning. And therefore you've got to be here, just in case of accidents. So I don't go to church very often. Are you ever picked up on that point? Yes. I went to a church <clears throat> a couple of years ago and the minister said, I don't see you here very often. So I just said to him, well, that, sir, is because I must be about my father's business. And he gave me a little wry look and he said, what is your father's business? And I said, I, sir, am a fisher of men. And there is a serious point, though, isn't there? I mean, do, do, do you feel that, that you are doing your father's business out here? There's no doubt about it. It was after quite a number of years of racing about in the racing boats that I realised that I hadn't just been given this ability of rowing to win races, but the best races were getting there in time to save somebody in the river. Later, George reveals how his faith and the love of rowing combine in his other passion, sculpture. But first, let's enjoy one of his favourite hymns. <laughs> 